transfers. Now, at the beginning of the school year, we looked at the energy transfer where Q equals MC delta T. But now we need to add a second equation, Q equals M times H. So you have to know when to use these. So I'm going to go back to uh, page 172, the heating curve. So the idea is when do you use Q equals MC delta T versus when do you use Q times M times H? Well, if you notice in the first one that we used at the very beginning of the year, you have to have a delta T value. So when you take a look at our heating, heating curve of a substance, you notice that some of the segments, like AB, it shows that it starts around 10 degrees and it ends around 23. So this segment has a delta T value. So this segment AB, it shows a temperature change. But when you look at segment BC, the temperature remains constant. It's not changing and it's holding at about 23. So this one there is no delta T. So you need to use Q equals MC delta T when your data shows that the temperature is changing. So segment AB, we would use Q equals MC delta T. And like AB, segment CD also shows uh, a range in the temperature. So it starts around 23 and ends around 35. So once again, in this segment, we could use Q equals MC delta T. And then lastly, we could also use that same equation for data in segment EF because it starts around 35 and extends towards 45 degrees Celsius. So the temperature is changing. So here we could also use Q equals MC delta T. So let's remind ourselves about this equation. So Q equals MC delta T. We use this equation when there is a temperature change. So we have a delta T present. And notice on our page 172 that when we have a temperature change occurring, there's only one phase of sample present. So in segment AB, it is all solid. Segment CD, it is, our sample is all liquid, and in sample EF, our sample is all in the gas phase. So we have a change in the temperature, but there is only one phase of matter present. Now, energy is being transferred during every segment, whether the temperature changes or the temperature does not change. So if there is no delta T, we can't use the equation that says delta T in it. So we'll use our second equation, which is Q times, H, times an H value. So Q equals M times H, and then once again in DE where the temperature is holding pretty, is being held constant around 35 degrees Celsius, this is also Q equals M times H. So we use M times H, Q equals M times H during a phase change. Okay. So when a phase change is occurring, there is absolutely no delta T. And as a result, you have two different phases of matter present. OK? So now, I said it was delta H, or M times H. And so you have two different H values. So we have, if you look on your table T in the back, you'll see that there's an M times H of F versus H of V. So you will use the H of F value during 
<coughs> sorry, during the melt freeze change, which means our sample is changing between the solid and liquid. Solid changes the liquid or the liquid changes back to the solid. You will use your H of V, vaporization, during the process in which either the sample boils or condenses, which means the sample is changing from a liquid to a gas or a gas back to a liquid. So if I go back to page 172, so since I, it is changing here, the solid is melting to a liquid, the liquid freezes back to a solid, I would use the H of F value here, where in segment DE, you would use the H of V, stands for vaporization, liquid boils to a gas, a gas condenses back to a liquid. So these equations here are both on table T. So you don't have to have these memorized because they're listed on your table T, but you need to know how to use them. So here we go, just reading through the problems. Let's first figure out which Q calculation to use. So our first example says, how much energy is required to heat uh, this mass of water from this temperature to this temperature? So since we are given two temperatures, we have delta T information. So this the first equation would be solved by using Q equals MC delta T. Moving on to the next equation, it reads as how much energy is needed to melt this mass of water at zero degrees Celsius. So the first thing I want to point out is that this is happening at a particular temperature. So that means that, that there is no delta T occurring. The temperature is constant. Also, we have this word here, melt, which represents a phase change, meaning our sample is going from a solid to a liquid. So that should give us the clues that we use Q equals M times H of F. The last example, how much energy is needed to vaporize this mass of water at 100 degrees Celsius? So once again, we have this word at 100 degrees Celsius, which is telling us that there is no delta T, the temperature is remaining constant, and we have this word vaporize, which we should understand means our sample is going from a liquid to a gas. We have a phase change occurring. So that should help us figure out that we're using Q equals M times H of V. Now let's go back and actually fill in the information here. Okay, so here it asks us how much energy. So this is our unknown. And you need to know what each of these variables represent. Q is the energy, M is the mass, C is specific heat, and delta T means temperature change. So we are actually solving for the Q value. So Q is unknown, so that means all other three values, we should be able to figure them out. So I see this number is tagged with a G, so that's my M value. So I have to put in 125 grams, and it belongs to. So we know that this sample, we know the identity of this sample is water. So we can find uh, water's C value on table B, the specific heat value. And when you go find that on table B, it will tell you that water's specific heat is 4.18 joules per gram degrees Celsius, and then we have our delta T. Now, we haven't done this in a while, so you need to remember that delta T is T2 minus T1. So our temperature starts at 20 degrees Celsius, it ends at 50. So our initial temperature is 20, and our final temperature is 50. So make sure you're doing a really good correct numerical setup. So we have 50 degrees Celsius minus 
20 degrees Celsius. And as you know, sometimes you are only graded on your correct numerical setup. And this would be a great correct numerical setup showing each of the values substituted in for their variables, including the units. So this would be a great correct numerical setup. Now, you may need to calculate a final answer. So when you put this into the calculator, the calculator answer would be 15,675 joules. <coughs> Looking at the next example, so once again, it says how much energy, which means that you are solving for Q. So whenever it's asked for how much energy, Q is your unknown. So that means we should know M and H of F for this sample. So M stands for mass, and I see this number tagged with a G. So I know that that's my mass value. So where M is, I'm going to substitute in 25 grams. H stands for the heat of fusion. Well, I know that the sample here is water. So the H of F value for water is on table B. So same chart for where the specific heat value is. And when you go and look at table B, you will see that the heat of fusion of water is listed as 334 joules per gram. So once again, if you need a correct numerical setup, this is what a really good correct numerical setup looks like. And if you have to calculate a final answer, it would be, one, it would be 25 grams times the 334. And on your calculator, it would read 8,000 350 joules. So last example, once again, we are asked to calculate how much energy. So that is Q. Q is our unknown. So therefore, we should know the value for M and the value for H of V. So as I look through my data, I see a number tagged with a G. So I understand that that's the mass of the sample. So for M, I'll replace it with 50 grams. And I notice in this problem, once again, I'm working with water. So water's H of V, its heat of vaporization, is also listed on table B. And when you go and look at table B, water's heat of vaporization is 2,260 joules per gram. So if you have to show the correct numerical setup, right here it is. And a final calculated answer would simply be determined by multiplying 50 times 2,260. And on your calculator, you would get an answer of 113,000. And the final unit would be joules. So you're going to take these ideas and you're going to practice these you do questions on the next page. Check your answers with your teacher.